Good morning, everyone. Pastor Brett here, and I wanted to do a quick uh, video review of this uh, Henry Morris study Bible. Hallelujah. So um, I thank the Lord for his grace and mercy, and I thank him for the privilege of being able to do this. Bless this time, I pray, Father God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. This is the Henry Morris study Bible. Um, this says... Um, apologetics, commentary, and explanatory notes from the father of modern creationism. And of course, Henry Morris is known as such. Um, and this is not a fancy leather Bible by any means. Uh, it's a Henry Morris study Bible, King James Version on the spine. And uh, you see um, that MB. Um, I don't know what that stands for. I apologize i just noticing that now um henry morris maybe that's uh ms oh that might be his signatures ms uh, i'm not sure at any rate um there you go it's a it it's um this is a it's a fibered wrap if you look closely you can see that it's a fibered wrap around the spine that that helps hold it together. It's a it's a durable um, Bible. It's a big Bible too, um, and of course it's a standard measurement um, uh, nine by six. Um, but it's uh, it's thick. It's um, two inches thick. It's it's probably more than two inches thick. I didn't measure the thickness. Um, probably should have. I don't have my measuring um, stick here, but at any rate, this is the um, Henry Morris Study Bible. So let's look into this Study Bible, and we'll check it out. Um, it was a gift from uh, Danny, um, and uh, um, there is an ISBN. Oh, that's there's your MB Master Books. Okay, there's the answer. Hallelujah to that question. This is. Um, Smith's own. Um, there is an ISBN right there. No, there's two of them. Um, and uh, this isn't an issue for me. Uh, for me, I, I don't care where it's printed. It's the Word of God. And it might be uh, lesser quality or whatever. Um, it's, it's the Bible. I, you know what I do when I see things like this? I pray that the people in China that are printing the word and proofreader, the proofreaders, I pray they get saved. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because uh, I'm absolutely convinced. I've experienced it. I've seen it. Uh, the word of God tells you such um, that it alone can save a soul. Um, you can drop a Bible on somebody's doorstep and it can save a soul. Here's an introduction to the Henry Morris Study Bible. He is reformed, by the way. Um, he even says so in his uh, um, notes. Here's an introduction to the Old Testament. Um, but here's the section that I read um, uh, that says he is, uh, um, he says, uh, based on this literal and contextual approach, which he interprets the Bible literally and contextually, um, he says, uh, the notes become one might call Baptistic in ecclesiology, premillennial in eschatology, non-charismatic in pneumatology, and of course that's the study of the spirit, or spiritual things, and then moderately Calvinistic in soteriology. And uh, um, yeah, so uh, he, he's reformed. His doctrine is clearly reformed. Um, and so I'm thankful for the doctrines of grace. It's scripture. Oh, yeah. Um, and then, of course, uh, you have the Old Testament. That's the cover page. Here's Genesis. Now, each book of this Bible has a concise yet pragmatic um, book introduction. Um, and uh, is tells you about the author. Um, Genesis is a little bit more extensive than most of the other um most of the other um, introductions, but there it is, Genesis, and then you have the beginning of the text, 
the lines separating the introduction from the text, um, and then notes. Wow, these are all notes, Henry Morris notes. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, he passed away in 2006, I believe it was, and uh, but his work will live as long as the Lord tarries, his work will live. And so I'm thankful for this. Um, the text and the notes. Now, here's one of my issues with study Bibles, um, is that, you know, with a study Bible such as this, you can get caught up with the notes and spend less time reading the text. I always encourage people, when you read a study Bible, go right for the text, be diligent, be um, um, determined uh, to um, read the text first. Always read the text first. And that, for me, is a chapter. Um, if you're going to read, you know, read, read it one chapter at a time, then go back over it and exposit the text one verse at a time. Um, if there are questions about particular things and he doesn't answer them for you, then you always do word studies. Exegesis. Do word studies. Um, you can see this is Smith's own right there. You can see the stitching. So um, it, this is a, a, a beautiful Bible. It really is. Uh, and of course, because it's a hardcover, you can lay it in your lap and you don't have to worry about it flopping over. Um, yeah, so... Um, this is an excellent Bible. Let's look at the introduction to um, Exodus, just to show you. I think the Old Testament books are a little bit more extensive in their introductions than the New Testament books. See, this is not as extensive as Genesis. You can see one page and a portion of the next. Then the text, and then the notes are also separated by a line. Um and then you have your notes. So uh, there are cross-references, by the way. They're end-of-verse references, and you can see them here. This is a very readable text. It is a 10-point font. Um, the um, uh, letting is very generous, so it makes the text easy to read. It is not comfort print, but because it's a large enough font and the letting is uh, so generous, it allows it to read almost as well as a comfort print. I really like reading this Bible. I truly do. Um, so, um, we'll go through, you know, and we'll look at, there are two ribbon markers in this Bible, as you can see. Um, and uh, it is verse by verse. This is a King James version, by the way. This is the version of choice for Henry Morris. He didn't use any other. This is a problem for me with this Bible. And if this is a problem for you, then you, this is not going to be the Bible for you. Whoa. Hallelujah. Um, yeah. You know, well, I, I'm thankful um, for uh, um, the influence of Steve. Um, Steve uh, uh, turned me away from Red Letter. I have a, a Bible that I'll show you here. You've seen this Bible already before, but this is the difference between this red letter is so hideous here in this Henry Moore study Bible. Um, I'll show you a page that is all red letter and the inconsistency of it. Um, it's just not consistent. There you go. You look here, darker. Right? And then it gets lighter down here. Now, I don't know if this camera is showing that as much as um, I'm trying to look at the camera so that I make sure that what I see is what you see. Um, I have a tendency to look over the camera and at the actual page. Um, but um, there are places where it fades terribly. Um, we're not seeing that here as much. Here's a spot where you'll see it's really dark up top. And then it fades slightly at the bottom. 
Although um, I'm looking at this red letter um, through the camera's eye and it's darker than it actually appears on the page. So bear that in mind um, as you watch this video. Um, so it's, it's red letter. It's kind of hideously pink in most places. Um, I'll show you John 14, 15, 16, 17. Uh, John 14 through 17 is all Jesus speaking. And wow, um, the changes are dramatic here. Um, so um, you're not, yeah, it's not showing up with the camera and the light from the camera um, is uh, making this look a lot darker than it is. Uh, I'm telling you, what I see with my natural eye um, is quite different from what you see on the camera. But um, when I tell you, trust me when I tell you, when you look at this with your natural eye, over here it's dark, and over here it's a lot lighter. Um, it's not showing up in the camera, though. Um, but that's okay. Um, Book of Acts. Uh, so, um, take it to Romans. This is my, um, my test of doctrinal, um, completion. I, I think that the doctrine, your doctrine is complete when it is reformed. Um, it is the most, um, biblically sound, um, doctrine I've ever encountered and I learned everything I learned from the scriptures I never read anything from any one of the quote unquote reformed theologians uh, of our day um, until I, I my doctrines were formed by scripture alone then after years of reading and studying the scriptures I began to read uh, my first book uh, by a Reformed theologian um, was uh, Systematic Theology by Wayne Grudem. Yeah, blew me away. I thought he stole my notes. I really, uh, that's how um, confirming, it was just a confirmation of truth. Um, but I take you to Romans 8. Hallelujah. And Romans 8, and you look at his notes on Romans 8, 29. Um, and you see. Um, there you go. He says, for no, God's foreknowledge is much more than just knowing what will happen in the future. But its full meaning is beyond our finite comprehension. It is evident that foreknowledge precedes election. From 1 Peter 1, 2, that it precedes predestination. Hallelujah. Um, the same word, uh, the Greek pragnosko, is translated foreordained in 1 Peter 1, 20, where it clearly speaks of more than merely knowing ahead of time what will happen. Hallelujah. So you, you can see from his notes that he is clearly reformed. Um, verse 29, you know, talks about the predestination and he explains the predestination um, uh, through his understanding of foreknowledge. Um, because God knew what would happen before it happened. Therefore, it is, you know. God foresaw it, therefore it is. God knew what you would do before you were born. He knew who you would be. He knew when you would turn to him. He knew you before you were born, and yet he still called you. I think about that. That blows me away. Um, yeah, because, I mean, you know, um, we all have a sin nature, and we all struggle with something one thing or another. Um, some people struggle with multiple things and wonder if there's ever going to be any relief. Know this, that your growth pattern and process is a matter of time. And some people take a lifetime to overcome certain things. 
other people become spiritual mountains overnight. Um, I believe that God's grace is commensurate with the need. The Lord will give you the divine influence upon your heart that you need when you need it most. Hallelujah. Always, always, always. That's his promise, and you can trust that. Um, and that is, you know, um, it for that segment of this video. Now, in the back of this Bible, you have appendix, appendix, um, and appendix, and they're numbered one through, um, and uh, we'll get you right to appendix number one. There is a concordance, by the way. Um, uh, this is an index to major topics, excuse me. Um, yeah, well, this is an index. So oh, this is nice, topical index. Okay, I didn't know this was here. Uh, here's the end of Revelation and the beginning of... There you go. Index to major topics in annotations. Okay, so in his notes, you'll see an index to these topics. And so you go through topically, and then you can go back and look at the scripture reference first, and then look at the note again. Um, always looking at the scripture first, so that you understand the notes from a biblical perspective. The appendices, um, and then one through, and there's all kinds of information here that um, is without a doubt helpful. Now, remember, he's a creationist, and he's known as the modern-day father of creationism. So he's really uh, deep into creationism. That's uh, one of the reasons why my uh, man Danny upstairs is uh, so much into this Bible, because Danny loves the um, topic and doctrines of creationism. Um, he really is deep into it, and... Uh, yeah, that's good. I mean, that's cool. Um, I'm not so much um, into that particular topic or doctrine, but um, I do have a foundational understanding, um, which is enough for me. Um, and then, of course, there's these appendices go along. Then there is um, a concordance in the back. Very end of the appendix, there is a concordance. King James Version concordance, but nonetheless, um, a good, not extensive, um, certainly not exhaustive, but then the maps. Now, the maps are on a thicker, glossy paper. If you're right under a light or a particular, the light from this camera is not allowing you to see the glare that I see on the map. Oh, there you go. You can see it. If you're under a particular light, and the glare bothers you, yeah, then these maps are not as appealing. For me, I, I, don't, uh, I don't like the glossy. I prefer a matte finish um, as opposed to a glossy finish, but that's it. There's your maps, and then um, they're not big on end sheets here. The map is the end sheet. You can see the tab underneath this paper. There's a tab there. It's a mesh tab. Um, and yet, this is a Bible Smith's own. And you can see that, hallelujah, how they do it. They wrap it with the mesh and the paper um, over the mesh. And uh, that paper creates that tab um, over the mesh tab. So that's how they do that. Um, hey, this is a great Bible. I would encourage you, if you are interested in it, um, to once again look up that uh, ISBN. And uh, there you go. There's the ISBN. Pause that. Check it out. And uh, hey, um, I did want to compare the red letter. Um, um, that's okay, honey. You can set that down right there. And so... You just look at the red letter in this Bible. This is a red letter, but this is um, comfort font, and the red letter is just deep. It's dark. As the headers, so is the lettering. The headers are a little bit darker, but the lettering is deep. It's rich. 
Um, it's a red letter. It's not pink. That neon pink, can't do it. So, hey, I just wanted to show you that red letter um, in this uh, study Bible here. Um, and hope and pray that uh, that's a blessing to you. Um, thanks for watching this review of the Henry Morris Study Bible. Um, I like a King James Version. Hey, Jesus loves you. We love you. Hope and pray that you have a great uh, rest of your day, folks. In Jesus' name.